But there is also a part in the book that discusses Michelle Obama's hair. And it seems to be a kind of a wish, wishful thinking, at least, that what would happen if we talk about role models if Michelle Obama went a bit more frizzy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know why I wouldn't even answer for me? I wouldn't call it going a bit more frizzy. I would call it if she stopped the straightening. Yeah. Because the frizzy, would, it's actually her. But that's how the, you know, if, if she stopped the straightening, um, it was something wishful. I mean, it wasn't at all, because I, mean, I'm, I'm, I really adore Michelle Obama. I know you do. And, um, and, I, and for me, she's an example of a woman who, a black woman, who is very keen to, to she fits all the definitions of mainstream black respectability. You have to straighten your hair, and even the kids now have to straighten their hair. And, and I wonder, are they doing it with a relaxer or with heat? And I just, you know, I worry about how uncomfortable it must be for the poor kids. But I, <laughs> I think for me, really, it was just a larger question of if Michelle Obama had natural hair, Barack Obama would not have won. <laughs> he would not have won. It's true. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad and it seems shallow, and, but it is true. Because particularly in America, there are all of these assumptions attached to natural black hair. If Michelle Obama had dreadlocks or an afro or cornrows, she might be thought to be um, radical, black panther, difficult. Or a jazz singer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's, that's also not... Not good for presidents. No. no. It's, it's, it's rather shocking. I mean, we can make fun of it, but it's, it's really sad. I think it is very yeah. sad. I think it is very sad. So you have, you have a, a black president, but we're not all there. You can't be too black.